Last time, we went over how the copper cells dealt with our silver plated items. Now, let's look at the silver cell. I do a clean out of my number two silver cell after running over 100 ounces through it at one time, dissolving 925 sterling pieces right in the cell and getting out pure silver. I also run XRF testing on the silver and discuss differences in purity and how you can test yourself at home. But what we need to do now is we're going to get this aspirator bottle out of here and get this cell cleaned up, taken apart, broken down, and let's uh, get a test on the purity of this silver. All right, so we're gonna siphon out the silver nitrate solution that's in the number two silver cell. I'm just gonna set up another five liter beaker down below. Okay, so this electrolyte will get filtered and we'll just reuse this. This definitely um, is not too dark to just be reused back in the number two cell once we get that set up. So we'll set that aside for now. And let's take a look at our crystals. You can see quite a bit of pure crystal in there and a layer of copper that probably plated out just maybe on the top. So I bet you there's still gonna be a 98% pure here. But we'll get some of this out. Um, I'll make sure to get a good sample where we'll mix quite a bit of this together and maybe take two or three samples and take the lowest average. So let's find another beaker to get this silver pulled out of here. I'll rinse the silver nitrate solution off of here and then we'll get a good look at it. So here I use a Bondo spreader to scrape the silver off of the cathode.
So over here I have our silver crystal on low heat and we're driving off the water, dry this out so we can get a weight on it. And here is all of the rinse water from cleaning out the number two cell. One thing you'll find about the system that I like, um, you don't take your waste material and pour it off anywhere. We use it back in the system at every turn. So we want to be careful of how much water we're putting in or we could evaporate some of it off. What I do with my wastewater when I clean out the cell is I'll just pour some nitric acid into here and I'll take the cathode out and we'll get this cleaned up a little bit first. But now I'll just reactivate the silver nitrate solution that has some copper in it in here with a little bit of nitric acid. That helps me clean everything out. Then we'll take that um, solution out and filter it. We'll take a look at what we have, but we'll be ready at that point then to use it back in the system. So here we'll pour in about 30 milliliters of nitric acid. This will clean off any of the residue that's on the beaker. It'll also dissolve a lot of the silver down in the bottom. It helps me clean up uh, the whole system. It also reactivates the silver nitrate. So here with just 30 milliliters of nitric, you can see that that's totally cleared up our solution. And now what I'll want to do is we're going to just put in some of our silver back in. And when this is all dissolved, but it has a little bit left so that there's an excess of silver, we'll know that our solution is ready to go back in. Keep in mind, when you read the XRF result, standard deviation accounts for air, but the fact that we only see silver and we don't pick up any other metals is a real good sign that this is three nines fine silver. How do you know when your silver is dry? When it stops doing that. So the XRF says 99 plus percent purity on the samples that we took. I will take a few more samples because I'm sure there is a little bit of copper in here. Um, and we'll see that when we dissolve this in nitric acid if we get a little blue color in there. So we're going to go ahead and measure out, I weighed out 400 grams of silver, we're going to measure out 400 milliliters of nitric acid. And we'll start with about 100 ml of nitric.
Okay, it's finally time to put the cell together. So first thing I do is let's get our electrolyte inside the beaker. Now we have 400 grams of silver in solution. And I like to run about 100 grams per liter. So I'll titrate this up to four liters using distilled water. Next, we'll install the cathode. Now we can assemble our anode bottle. And, um, and Craftsman makes these. I get this at Ace Hardware. Um, they're about 13 bucks, but the material is Dacron. So just cut out about a two inch circle. If you watch my other videos, you've seen me do this a few times. I'll just get this kind of close. Make sure you get, uh, these are chemically resistant zip ties. If you use uh, the standard zip ties that you'll get at the hardware store, they'll last one run up to three, four weeks. In the nitric acid, they'll, uh, de they'll break down. All right, next we'll put this collar on. And we'll lower this in. We'll let that fill up. And we'll go ahead and get some crystal loaded up in the cell. So there's just one thing left to do. Pour an anode bar. So let's go ahead and place the anode bar in the aspirator bottle. 
and let's turn it on. I'm going to start off at three volts and we'll just see what that gives us.